From the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania and Sirius XM, this is the Work and Life podcast, which explores how to create harmony among the different parts of life, work, home, community, and the private self, your mind, body, and spirit. The conversation you're about to hear was originally recorded on the Work and Life radio show on Sirius XM 111, business radio powered by Wharton. Here is your host, founding director of Wharton's Work-Life Integration Project and author of the bestseller, Total Leadership, Professor Stu Friedman. My guest for this episode is the amazing Julie Smolyansky. Julie is CEO of Lifeway Foods, a company known for its tart and tangy cultured milk smoothie called Kiefer. Julie is a great example of how to successfully integrate work with the rest of life. In this episode, we talk about her beginnings as a CEO at age 27, which made her the youngest CEO of a publicly traded company, her family life, and how Lifeways Kiefer and Julie's nonprofit work benefit the community. I hope you'll enjoy my conversation with Julie Smolyansky. Julie, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me, Professor Friedman. Professor Friedman, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's great to you? be back in touch with you again, Julie, yeah. and thanks for taking yeah. the time. So you're president and CEO of Lifeway Foods, a company that your father founded, and that you took over suddenly at the age of 27. Uh, tell us that story uh, about how that happened and, and, and how well you or not you were prepared uh, for, for taking on that role at such a young age. Sure. So um, my family immigrated from the former Soviet Union in 1976. We were um, refugees and settled in Chicago. We were the first of 48 families to be settled. And um, through their entrepreneurial spirit, as so many immigrants are, they uh, started a business and then it, a deli, a Russian food deli in Chicago. And that eventually led to Lifeway Foods, which is the largest manufacturer of kefir, which is it's like a yogurt drink that was a staple in their country in the former Soviet Union and continues to be um, widely used throughout Europe. And um, they they started Lifeway in 1986 and took it public in 88 to, um, you know, support all of the, the growth that they were experiencing. And, um, you know, at the time I was 11 years old when they started the business and uh, I saw them work really, really hard and make a lot of sacrifices and they had made so many sacrifices, even just to pick up and leave and come to a new country with an infant and no language skills and no resources. But um, they, they um, you know, uh, just launched Lifeway and, and worked tirelessly and there was no work-life balance. I mean, I think mm. it's a really nice luxury to talk about it when when you know you're you're here with all the resources and networks that we have but for an immigrant family it's it's a little bit of a different conversation and so um uh my dad worked you know 7 days a week and there were times that I really felt like I didn't see him for months on end because I'd go to sleep and he'd still be working and I'd wake up and he'd already be gone for work and same with the weekends and so you know I saw them sacrifice quite a bit and so uh, I graduated college. I was planning on being a psychologist. Did you have a uh, brother or sister? I do. I have a younger brother, and he's the CFO. And so, so we run the company together now mm-hmm. along with our, our team. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was planning on being a, a, a psychologist, and I had started grad school and was in the field. And I, I had a, you know, serendipitously, just how things happen. I had a bad experience in the field. Asked my dad for a part-time job so I could just finish grad school and then reevaluate what I was going to do um, in the field of psychology. And I, I came to work for him part-time uh, doing 10 hours of data entry work, and I fell in love with what he was doing and how he was empowering people, which is something I wanted to do in the field of psychology, but he was just doing it in a different way um, through a for-profit manner. And How was he I, doing it? Give, can well, you tell us a little bit more about this, that? Yeah, so he, he, you know, life way, so kefir is, it's loaded with active bacteria, good bacteria that the gut needs for um, immunity and healthy digestion. And there's loads of, of great 
um, health benefits associated with it, and 2,000 years of history and lots of emerging science around um, the benefit of uh, diversified uh, bacteria in the gut and how that just impacts our for everything from depression to um, obesity to uh, you know, attention deficit disorder to just overall healthy immune system. So, you know, he was doing this in the time when fast food and, and quick food was, was, you know, in, in a very large proportion over, over emphasized in our, in our country. And of course, now we have this debate about health food and healthy food options. And so he was very early on to the health message. And, um, I loved that he was able to like, you know, empower people with, options for healthier eating and information around healthy eating and telling the story around the benefits of probiotics and kefir. And so I I just fell in love with it. And I essentially left grad school after the first year and came to work for him full time at that point in 98. So I was here full time. I worked with him side by side. And it was also a great way for me to just see what my dad did, you know, all the years that I had not seen him. And I was able to reestablish a, a pretty good relationship with him. And, I bet um, he loved our it. Yeah, we, we really enjoyed the five years. We worked side by side. And I I just re kind of was reintroduced to my father and as an adult and we went on business trips together and it was just a really, really wonderful time. My my brother graduated college and came to work for us. He had just graduated when my dad died. He'd only been with Lifeway for about three months. So unfortunately, um, on a summer day, June 9, 2002, my father died of a sudden heart attack and within minutes he was gone. And it was um, really, high, really, really traumatic and one of the, like the worst days of my life. And not only was I mourning the loss of my father, but the company at that point was about $12 million in revenue. We had about 70 employees, nationwide distribution. Um, and so there was definitely a lot riding on it, but also I knew that this was my father's complete passion and everything that he had spent his entire life working for. And so I made a promise to him that I would do everything in my power to make sure that Lifeway not only succeeded, but thrived. And it was not easy. The, 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 the day that we learned that my father had died and, you know, friends and family kind of come to the widower's house and kind of comfort. Mm -hmm. But instead what happened that within, you know, earshot, a few feet away from me, a handful of his friends were standing around in a circle and just saying, you know, sell your stock. This company's done. There's no way that a girl can run this company. And that's what I heard. And, and that really pissed me off to be totally honest. And it still fuels me every day. Um, Really? You think about that every day? I do. I really, it drives me like to no end. I, I, I'm not bitter about it, but it drives me. And I just think about that message and what it means and kind of the misogyny and the society that we kind of live in even today. And, um, I mean, it's understandable. It was a fairly decent sized company, but at well, the you were time, young. I, and I was young. I was 27, but you know, my father started the business with a really, really strong Russian accent, no resources, you know, they bootstrapped this thing um, and no network. And I was educated in the United States. I didn't go to Wharton, but I, uh, I, I was Our loss. in the U.S. <laughs> right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe one day. Um, and so, uh, you know, I just I, I, I had my own challenges, but I was in a different place than my father. And, you know, I had um, resources and networks and friends and, and people that I can call to, to support or whatever. And I just, every day I came in and I worked really, really, really hard. I worked, sometimes I felt like it was a 22 hour day, but probably closer to 18 hour work days. Truthfully, it was about 18 to 20 hours. And um, I, I read, literally, I read law law book sometimes just trying to figure out legal i tried to get my head around accounting every department i really went through and and tried to understand as best as i could and you know i just said failure was not an option and you know the stock was plummeting and nasdaq halted trading um eventually you trade on Na- the the symbol yeah, is lway right L- L-W-A-Y. Yeah, L-W-A-Y. right lway eventually um, the work and the implementation of all the strategy that we had put in place, it 
really paid off. And of course, actually strangers are sometimes kinder than friends. So many people rallied around us and really wanted to see us succeed and, and pulled me up and pulled me into their networks and invited me into organizations like y- you know, YPO, which is how we met um, years ago, and all different organizations. So but, we should and, say what that is. What is YPO? Oh, so it's, yeah, so it's Young Presidents Organization, and it's a network of presidents and CEOs around the world that have a business of a certain size, and each chapter has its own requirements. Um, and it's for CEOs under the age of 50. So I certainly qualified there. Um, <laughs> and so uh, that's been a really big lesson for me in, in terms of like learning that leadership looks different for different people and that, you know, there's no carbon cutout of, of what a CEO is or how they lead. And I've just gotten so many great examples of different styles of leadership and role models and what that looks like. And especially because I'm a woman and there are different kind of ways that women lead. And so being around female leaders has been a lot, really helpful for me to just be confident in my own skills and um, embrace my intuition, um, different skills that I think women bring to the table. And it's one of the reasons I really love just diversified teams that, that um, kind of encompass all society that, that are reflective of what our society looks like. And um, anyway, so, you know, the rest is kind of history. We worked really hard and LifeWay today where we've just surpassed our hundred million revenue dollar mark. Our stock is wow. you know, doing well, I think. I don't, I mean, I'm let, let the, let, leave that up to the analysts and public, but um, we're now in uh, launching in Canada. We've expanded into London. Um, we're in Mexico. We're trading, you know, throughout the Caribbean. One of the, the, the really great things about LifeWay is we are real cutting edge in terms of innovation around food, and we do really different things. Um, so we were one of the first companies to bring the pouch that now you see so many mothers and fathers use these pouches to feed their kids. Um, we were the first company to... I put, don't know uh, that I've seen that. Can you... Could you just oh, you describe? haven't seen that. Oh, my God. This is such a time saver for working families. Um, so, you know, instead of sitting there and using the spoon to, you know, feed the kid, it could take like an hour to feed a baby. Yes. Um, I used to enjoy doing put, that. That was yeah, a fun well, time. It, it is great, but you know, uh, you know, we're working busy pam- families yes, too. Yes, and there's yes, yes. We want to play, not all right. Real time. So, so we how does the pouch with, work? So the pouch, you just the kid. It's so intuitive. The kid just sucks on the pouch, and you know, you can go for a walk and give them a snack, or if you're running errands, you can give them one of these pouches, and they just suck the food up. And our pouch has wow. a no spill spout, so we innovated all of these things to make it convenient for working families to make healthier food choices for so, their children. So you're making children's foods as well, or is, or is kefir uh, also a, a, something that, that is good for uh, very young people? It's good for very young people. It's good for pregnant moms. It's good for, it's good for uh, babies, you know, like let's say four months on. So my kids had it at four months. Um, it helps build that immune system and, and that diversified gut bacteria that we need. Um, it's good for senior citizens, anyone with a weakened immune system, people who are on antibiotics absolutely must consume probiotics and kefir because you need to replenish that microflora that our uh, lifestyle, our modern lifestyle just takes it away from us, from travel, stress, antibiotics, things like that. So, so, so your product is really all about uh, helping people become healthier. Absolutely. It empowers and nurtures the body and the soul. Tell us a little bit more, if you can, about how the change in your, in your, the definition of your husband's role, how that changed your family and your business. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think it just, uh, you know, we had to make the decision of, of whose career is going to kind of propel. And we were at the point where mine was really, and Lifeway was really exploding. And, um, you know, he said, you know, you go do do that. You're really good at what you're doing. Let's keep keep doing that. And I have daughters, and I thought we both decided that it would be a really great thing for them to see um, this uh, kind of change in role models. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is that, you know, like, like myself, he also missed his family, his parents when, when they were building their business, he had a family business also. And he said it was really, it's been really the joy of his life to, um, 
kind of raise the daughter, raise our daughters and uh, be there for them and, you know, have tea parties and things like that um, and, and be the be the kind of head caretaker care and and it's it's been really nice to have parents see that and set up play dates with you know if it's him and and other people um uh other moms uh it's, it's good for the kids to see that um i think again when we talk about redefining what it means to be a man i think he is living proof of that um and an empathetic father and uh a father that you know i know that my daughters would feel comfortable going to for anything so uh, as an entrepreneur uh you know it, it's it's often seen as um a lifestyle that gives you a greater amount of control over your time. But of course, there's intense pressure and you've described what it was like for your father, for your husband's family. Uh, You know, the pressure is so intense because the buck stops with you and there's huge responsibility for, you know, people who you're paying for your, your customers, suppliers. So what are some of the most useful strategies that you've discovered as the CEO of your company for how you can be truly effective in the different parts of your life, given all the the pressures that you face and and really be able to take advantage of the fact that you are the chief executive. Yeah. Well, one of the greatest things is I I read your book, (laughs) Total Leadership, and I I spent uh, the day and a half with you back five years ago. And it was just when we were, you know, kind of settling our family and having kids. And, um, you know, one thing that really hit home for me was this idea, not that we should be striving for like work-life balance per se, because I don't know that it'll ever really be in balance. It's always, uh, you know, something's out of balance. And But the idea is that we all have to rectify with ourselves is to integrate our career, our self, our family, and our community into one overlapping circle so that, you know, and I'm not perfect at it, but I think about it a lot. I sometimes get three out of four integrated. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm happy with that. There's no one and, perfect at it, but that's the ideal. So you yeah. really did get it. Keep going. How do you do it? What, what, are, what so, are some of the things that you do? Well, for example, when I, um, you know, I, it's important for me to be fit and healthy. I, I'm a better leader when I'm, you know, able to run and, you know, it, it's it's really important for me to run. I think it's important for everybody to find something, some kind of athletic place where they can, you know, out put that put those energy and stress and and, and a place to go to, um, to to have that that endorphin rush. Um, and so so I run marathons, for example. And not only do I run marathons, but I I talk about them in my work and I try to lead that lead through through that experience and share. Um, my experience is that my customers also feel like, and, and my, my team, that they all feel like they too can go and spend an hour on working for, you know, their own health and invest in their own health. Um, but not only do I run, but I also raise money for an organization called Every Mother Counts, which talks about maternal health and advocates for better maternal health in the United States and globally. And so much of that is, a, you know, good nutrition and making sure that, you know, mom has enough nutrients and that, you know, when baby is born, that enough nutrients are running through baby so we can really, you know, push that baby up and, and catapult them into the world. And so I, you know, I integrate that messaging as well throughout the company and we had a whole campaign around it. Um, we asked our customers to support our campaign and helped raise awareness there. Really? You asked then, them to, you know, to contribute financially to the to this cause. You well, asked your they, when they bought a bottle of our kefir, then we contributed to the the campaign. But I we see. asked them to buy the kefir so that we could then contribute. I to, see. And, uh, and how did that? Every mother counts. How did that yeah. play out? Well, it was great. I mean, you know, we raised awareness around maternal health um, in the United States. We are fiftieth from maternal health, and we should be first or second maybe, but we're 50th and not a lot of people know that. And globally, women are dying out of preventable, you know, things that are preventable um, because of lack of resources, lack of energy, lack of water, uh, a whole host of, you know, reasons why women are dying around the world. And I've seen that firsthand. I went to Bangladesh to to see that. And um, I traveled with the UN Foundation just last month to Uganda. 
um, and, and witnessed and saw some solutions also. And then the key is that there are solutions to, um, you know, entrepreneurs are the key to this and that you can make a, a, some kind of innovation that can solve a problem in the world. And that's what we really need, these savvy, sophisticated, smart uh, entrepreneurs to, to look at a problem and hack that problem. Um, but so just going back to the running, I, yeah. you know, I, and when I had the little kids, when they were little, I would do all of that and I was running with the stroller. So, you know, that was my, my time to kind of share with my kids. They saw that I was doing it. They know that it's important to, to exercise. Um, I'm working and raising awareness on the campaign that we're building at Lifeway and I'm working on myself and, and my own health. And so that's how I, you know, can rectify. And, and that's just one example, but I try to incorporate That's a great that example. That's what I call a four-way win, Julie. Like because you're That's you're right. you're hitting on all cylinders. You're making things better for yourself, your family, your community, and your business life all at once. Yeah, and it's all thanks to you. Well, I, I, you are an inspiring <laughs> person in in the energy that you've got, and also the uh, you know the uh, interest that you have in in really bringing the pieces together. Now, at a at a company like yours, where you're providing health with the product that you you know are making money from. It's it's a little easier to to uh, kind of integrate, you know, your your business life with the rest of your life. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs who are who make other kinds of products or, or you know give the world other kinds of services where the connection to health is not so obvious? Well, I think every company there's a role for each one of our companies and each person within a company to look for solutions to do it better, um, whether that's or contribute to a nonprofit. I mean, you know, you you don't have to make something. You could be providing some sort of pro bono services to a nonprofit or some kind of social impact uh, in you know entrepreneurship endeavor. Um, there, there's you know you could. Definitely channel that energy into uh, doing something better, doing something in a in a way that supports and helps and aids society. And and God, you know, pick up the paper and find your problem. You know, anything that you're passionate about, you'll you'll do really well in. in and and in what's solving. the impact in your business in terms of your employees and how they respond to this uh, approach that you've got to, to living and working? How do they? How do you think they they see you and what does it mean for them in their lives and their families? Well, for one, I do. I have a young work, uh, a, a young team at this point. I'm actually getting older. <laughs> it's now been uh, almost 12 years and I'm almost on the edge of 40. So my team is is uh is younger and they're I would almost say they're you know the millennial generation and it is really important for them you know we've gone through a recession and we saw that those those big fancy job titles and and fancy jobs in Wall Street and and around the country really didn't mean much and so many of them are gone and uh you know the the sense of loyalty and family here is really really prominent that's a really big theme in the company um and then the fact that they feel that their energy is being used to not just make a product, but really there's a greater good that they're bringing to society that they feel really, um, I think, proud to be at Lifeway. And we have very, very little turnover. I mean, I can count on one hand how many uh, people have left in five years. Literally, it's less than five years have left in, in the last in the last 12 years. Wow. Um, and even when my father was here, I mean, we have very, very little turnover. And I think it is because there is a sense of family um, and, and that we are one family here together. Well, it's more than um, that. You're, you're also uh, advocating for and living a, according to a set of values about what, you know, a, a progressive vision of, of, of society that I'm sure it must be very inspiring to, especially to millennials, but to, to all your employees. All people, yeah. I mean, people really love it. I mean, I get really good feedback from, from my team and everyone who works at Lifeway when they say that they really love working for Lifeway. And, you know, we've helped people um, with different, all different things that have hardships in their lives or, you know, you mean your employees? Very, yeah. It's 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 a really nice place to be, and it feels really really good to be here. And you know, we've we've prospered in the recession. We doubled our business since the recession started, so uh, more than doubled at this point. But 
Yeah. We, we just have a, uh, about a minute or so left, sure. Julie, and uh, I, I would love to, for you to give us just a, a quick uh, take on what you've been doing as a social activist with uh, Test 400K. Can you just tell yeah, us briefly exactly. about that and the sure. news that you shared on Facebook? Thank you. Yes, it was so exciting. So um, I, as I mentioned earlier, in college, I was a rape crisis counselor, started out my life in, as in a social work in field. Um, left to pursue Lifeway and, and help my dad and, and take over Lifeway. But um, recently, through my, my journeys and travels and, and everything, discovered and, and learned of the, the fact that there's 400,000 untested rape kits in the United States. A rape kit is the evidence that's collected from a, a victim's body after an assault. And they're shelved away for, some, in some cases, 30 years. Less than 20% have ever been tested. And so when I found out about this, I was so outraged and angry and decided that, you know, what's the point of being a leader and having some sort of platform and a network and resources if I can't advocate for change and we have to fix this. And so um, I started an organization called Test 400K and um, we just uh, yesterday, as a matter, we put in legislation to um, halt the statute of limitations until a rape kit is tested. And um, it passed unanimously on the Senate floor in Illinois yesterday. So it moved on to the House. Yeah, I'm really, really excited because this is real change. Like This isn't just talking about it or creating awareness, but we're really giving uh, prosecutors and, and victims and survivors another tool to work their case and create change. And it's just one, one piece of legislation, and there's so much more we need to do. Julie, you are but, creating yeah. change all over the place. Um, Thank you. Where can people find out more about uh, the, the work of change that you're doing, not just in, at LifeWays, but, but elsewhere? Where, where would be a good place for li- listeners to go? Um, well, you can follow me on Twitter at Julie Smolansky. Um, you can follow Lifeway at Lifeway underscore Kiefer. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. You can go to our website. All you right. can go to Test 400K. Test 400K. At, that's, yeah, at it, Test 400K. That's a remarkable um, initiative. We're, we're going to have to uh, sign off here. Julie, it's been so great speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. It was good to talk to you, too, Stu. Well, I hope you can see how Julie Smolyansky's remarkable story demonstrates how the CEO of a successful public company can achieve harmony between work and the rest of life. Julie provided a great example of what I call a four-way win with her hobby of running. A four-way win is any creative action that improves your personal life, family life, community life, and work life. In her personal life, running allows Julie to stay healthy, and fit while dealing with the stresses of being a CEO. In her family life, running is a fun way to connect with her daughters as she pushes them in a stroller while she's running. In the community, the commitment to personal health that Julie demonstrates serves as a role model for people both inside of Lifeway and others to invest in their health and this activity strengthens the value of the LifeWay brand as a healthy dietary choice, an important business goal. Way to go, Julie! I encourage you to follow her lead and look for four-way wins in your own life. They are there for the taking, folks, but you do have to look for them. Then, take small steps to pursue them and see what happens and what you learn from trying. Thanks for listening to this episode of Work and Life. This conversation was originally recorded on my weekly radio show on Sirius XM 111, Business Radio, powered by Wharton. Tune in for live broadcasts of Work and Life on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. For more about today's guest and about previous guests, check out our blog at workandlifepodcast.com. Join the conversation by commenting there, or tweeting at Stu Friedman. And for more ideas and tools for creating harmony among the different parts of life, check out our website, totalleadership.org, and my book, Total Leadership, Be a Better Leader, Have a Richer Life. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share it with your friends, family, 
and coworkers. Until next time, I'm your host, Stu Friedman, and I thank you for joining me.